Welcome to the third week of Free From Falls Online. This week, we will be discussing ways to improve your mobility. The objective of this week's program are the following. First, to describe when and why the use of mobility equipment might be beneficial. Second, to understand some of the barriers to using mobility devices. Third, to describe the types of equipment that can enhance mobility and the indications for their use. And fourth, identify medications that can improve walking speed, leg strength, reduce spasticity, and improve gait. Many people think that using an assistive device is giving in to the disease or shows that your mobility problems have gotten worse. This is a common reaction. But a mobility device can actually enhance your function so you will be able to do better, be safer, be more independent, and do more of the things that you want to do. When rehabilitation does not improve walking to a sufficient extent, mobility can often be enhanced with the use of a mobility device. Finding a device that is suitable and appropriate to your particular needs is very important. Without the proper devices, your mobility problems are likely to interfere with your participation in home, work, family, social, and leisure activities. It is very important that you consult with a physical or occupational therapist to help select the right equipment for you. The therapist should assist you to select the correct device that will enhance your mobility. They should also adjust the device for optimal fit and train you to use it appropriately and safely. Additionally, the therapist may be knowledgeable about insurance considerations for various mobility devices. One question that often comes up is, how do I know when I need a mobility device? Well, you may need a mobility device if you are experiencing frequent falls, if you hold on to furniture or walls while walking, you expend too much energy while walking, or you avoid certain activities because of mobility difficulties or the fear of falling. Another question that often comes up is, how do I know when I need a different mobility device? It may be time to be evaluated for more supportive mobility device if you have the following issues. You hesitate to participate in the activities that you want to do. You are falling or have a fear of falling while using your mobility device. You are unable to walk for short distances in a reasonable time period. You become very tired after going just short distances. You experience hand or wrist pain or also back or knee pain. You cannot sit comfortably in your wheelchair or scooter. Or if you are unable to operate or maneuver your device as it requires. There are several types of mobility equipment. The first that we'll talk about is orthotics. Orthotics are braces that position a weak or spastic foot properly and compensate for foot drop, a symptom that causes the toe of your shoe to scrape the ground when you walk. This may cause you to trip or fall. Wearing orthotics may decrease fatigue increase ankle stability, and decrease falls. An ankle foot orthotic, or AFO, is the most commonly prescribed orthotic. This plastic brace fits inside your shoe and comes up along with the back of your calf. So how do you know if an AFO is the right device for you? Oftentimes, an AFO may be indicated if you experience foot drop 
or a weak ankle that causes you to drag your foot. An AFO may also be used to position and support your foot on the footrest of a wheelchair. Finally, either an articulated or rigid AFO may be recommended depending on the flexibility of your ankle. Another option for mobility equipment is the Functional Electrical Stimulation, or FES. This new technology can supplement the benefits of a rigid AFO in some people with MS. FES devices are wireless stimulators that activate the perineal nerve on the outer part of the calf just below the knee. Activation of this nerve stimulates the muscle to contract and pick the foot up for clearance in walking. You should be evaluated by a physical therapist to determine if one of these devices would work for you. They are a great deal more expensive than AFOs and are typically not covered by insurance. So how do you know whether a FES device is right for you? It may be useful if you have a foot drop or weak ankle that causes you to drag your foot and trip or fall when walking. This device is typically not effective if your ankle is not flexible. Also, before purchasing a FES device, it is important to be evaluated by a physical therapist to determine if you are a suitable candidate. Hip flexors are the muscles that lift the leg and swing it forward. They may be weak as a result of MS and can cause you to stumble or fall because your foot drags on the ground. A lightweight and low cost device called a hip flexion assist device may improve your walking and leg strength. It uses a combination of straps and elastic bands to supplement the activity of weak hip flexors. These devices are typically most useful for people who have hip flexor, knee flexor, or ankle flexion weakness. It's also useful for folks who have fatigue when walking which results in limited endurance. It may be helpful for those who drag the weaker leg and also for those individuals who have tried to use an AFO for a foot drop but still struggle to walk due to hip or knee flexor weakness. Another option for mobility equipment is a weighted vest. Recent studies have shown that wearing a strategically weighted vest might improve stability in walking and may improve gait and mobility in people with MS. These research findings suggest that the vest can help some people achieve better balance, which leads to greater stability in walking. Of note, Proper fitting and placement of the weights in the vest is critical and should be done by a physical therapist. Oftentimes, the weighted vest does not really help the walking of individuals with significant leg spasticity or very weak hips. Also, those with drop foot may typically not benefit from the use of a weighted vest. A commonly used assistive device is the cane. Canes come in many forms, which include a straight cane, which is seen on the left, and a quad cane, a cane with four legs at the tip. Both a straight cane and a quad cane can improve support when balance or weakness of the legs becomes a problem. If one leg is weak, a single cane is used in the opposite hand of the weak leg. Two canes can be used if both legs are weak. Sizing a cane correctly is critical to its safe and effective use. Please consult with a physical therapist about the correct length 
and for instruction on the best way to use a cane. Oftentimes, canes are most beneficial for those who can walk by themselves but feel that they need a little extra support for balance. In this case, a cane might be the right device for you. A walking stick may appeal to you because it appears sportier and more attractive than a cane. It may be a good alternative to a cane for some people, but again, it is important to be evaluated by a rehabilitation professional to determine whether a walking stick or sticks will provide the amount of support that you need. Two walking sticks, such as ski poles, may be useful for some people as well and improve your balance, posture, and confidence. Crutches provide greater stability when weakness is more severe and canes are not sufficient to provide support. Forearm crutches, also called Canadian crutches, are stable and allow you to use one hand to open a door when the cuff is secured to your forearm. Axillary crutches, which come up to the underarm, provide greater stability than the forearm crutches. As with the canes, crutches should be sized specifically for you and you should be given instructions on how to use them properly. Those who may benefit from crutches include those who can walk by themselves but feel that you need extra support for balance on one or both sides of the body. Individuals who decide to use crutches must have good arm, shoulder, and hand function to control the crutches. Walkers may be prescribed if you have weakness in your legs or if balance is a problem. There are a variety of walkers from the standard one with four fixed legs to two-wheeled and four-wheeled versions. Most can be folded so they are easy to transport in a car. Four-wheel walkers have handbrakes and seats that are helpful if you begin to experience fatigue while you're walking. Those who may benefit from a walker or a rollator are those who can walk by themselves but feel that a little additional support for balance is needed for both sides of the body. Also, it may benefit those who are continuously holding on to the walls and furniture within their home for support. Typically, walkers require good arm and hand function to move the walker forward while walking. If you occasionally get tired and require frequent rest periods when out in the community, a rollator with a built-in seat may be a good option for you. Wheelchairs or three-wheeled scooters might provide mobility in your home or in the community when walking becomes limited or is no longer a safe means of motion. They can also be used to conserve energy. Motorized scooters and manual wheelchairs are often used by people who can walk a short distance but also need to conserve their energy. People who use scooters must have sufficient trunk control and good balance in a seated position to sit comfortably and safely. It is also important to recognize the possible need for ramps to allow access in and out of your home. You may need to use a lift to get your wheelchair in and out of your car. Manual wheelchairs can have customized seating, but most individuals who can propel their own chairs simply use a standard seat cushion. Individuals who use motorized wheelchairs or power chairs have a variety of options for seating and positioning, as well as options for modifications to the joystick for propulsion. You need to consult with an occupational therapist physical therapist, or other rehab specialist 
when making decisions about the type of wheelchair you should purchase. A manual wheelchair is indicated when you are no longer able to walk functional distances independently in a safe and efficient manner, meaning that you cannot go from point A to point B without getting too tired or experience an increased fear of falling. A manual wheelchair is also indicated for those who can use a manual wheelchair within your work or home environment. A scooter may be indicated for you if you are able to sit down and stand up from this chair safely and independently, have enough strength and coordination in your arms to operate the scooter's tiller steering mechanism, and have good trunk control and good balance when sitting. A basic power wheelchair may be a good option for you if you are getting increasingly tired and do not have the energy to propel a manual wheelchair. Also, if you are at high risk for developing upper extremity injury from propelling a manual wheelchair. It can also be useful for those who feel progressively weaker and have less energy for your daily activities. For those who have been using a scooter but are unable to continue doing so because of a decline in your physical condition. For those who have used a scooter that is difficult to maneuver in your home. And for those who need a little bit more trunk support to maintain proper posture and balance. Overall, there are many devices that can optimize your mobility and improve your walking in a safe fashion. We recommend that you seek advice from a physical therapist or rehab specialist about the right equipment for you. Using equipment that has not been fitted properly or adjusted for you can be dangerous and can actually increase your risk of falls. Getting the right device is critical because many insurance companies have restrictions about coverage for mobility devices. There is only one medication that is approved specifically to improve walking. Ampira, or delfampridine, was approved by the FDA in 2010 to improve walking in people with MS. This oral medication can increase the conduction of nerve signals in nerve fibers whose insulating myelin coat has been damaged by MS. In the clinical trials of Ampira, a greater proportion of people on treatment had a consistently improved walking speed compared to those who took the placebo. Those participants in the study who experienced increased walking speed also demonstrated improvement in leg strength. Ampira can be used by people with all forms of MS along with whatever disease modifying treatment that they're taking. Ampira should not be used by anyone with a history of seizures or moderate to severe kidney disease. A number of medications are available to treat spasticity. Each of these requires fine tuning of the dose to achieve the optimal antispasticity effect with minimal side effect. Baclofen is a muscle relaxer and antispasticity agent that acts on the brain and the spinal cord to relieve muscle cramping and tightness. Baclofen is usually taken by mouth, but can also be administered through an implanted pump if you have severe spasticity or are unable to tolerate the side effects of oral baclofen. The pump delivers baclofen directly into the spinal cord. Because it does not circulate in its full dose throughout the body, as is the case with oral baclofen, it can be taken in smaller doses with less systemic side effects. Tizanidine, or Xanaflex, is also an effective medication for treating spasticity. It works by slowing down motor nerve function in the spinal cord. 
Tizanidine is available in both pill and capsule forms and is typically started at a low dose, then gradually increased until spasticity is controlled. Side effects may include dry mouth, drowsiness, weakness, and dizziness with sudden changes in position due to low blood pressure. Diazepam or Valium is an effective medication for treating spasms. It acts as a central nervous system depressant that calms the nervous system. Side effects include weakness and sedation. Dantrolene or dantrium is a muscle relaxant that may relieve muscle cramping, spasms, and tightness caused by MS. Unlike baclofen, tizanidine, and diazepam, it acts directly on the muscles rather than on the central nervous system. Another option is botulinum toxin. In addition to being used for cosmetic purposes, Botox has also been used successfully to treat spasticity in small muscle groups in the hands and in the feet. It chemically paralyzes the muscle for a period of three to six months, so the treatment must be repeated periodically. Additionally, there are medications that can be used to manage fatigue. Modafinil, or Provigil, is a wakefulness-promoting agent that is approved for the treatment of narcolepsy. It has been shown to reduce self-reported fatigue in some people with MS. Another option is amantadine, which is an antiviral medication used to prevent or treat certain influenza infections. Although the mechanism of action is unknown, it has been shown to be sometimes effective in relieving fatigue and multiple sclerosis.